This is Comedy Central. Welcome to the Daily Show. Ladies, drink free. Anything can happen. Welcome to Tough Crowd. That's not so hard, is it? Today, we are talking about violations of rights based on two creepy stories that happened yesterday. The first story is that there's a jail in Macy's for people who are accused of shoplifting. There's a jail where you can actually, if you don't want to deal with the cops, they'll deal with you in there. You pay five times the penalty or something. Now, I know how that is. I spent two years in Target prison. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I was sentenced to Nordstrom's, but a judge said it was overcrowded. And it was, uh... <laughs> My cousin had a hard... He was in uh, Home Depot. I'm not kidding. They make you build your own cell in that place. They had, <laughs> they had him tied up with a garden hose and to a five-piece patio set. <laughs> The hardest time I ever did, and this is not funny, I really, uh, they sodomized me with a totes umbrella in TJ Maxx. All right. <laughs> now, luckily, they brought some uh, body oil at Crabtree and Elvillin, but it was still pretty brutal, you know? <laughs> All right, story number two is, uh, there's a New York law professor who resigned after technicians found kitty porn in his computer. All right, first of all, if you're into kitty porn, you better learn how to fix your own computer, all right? <laughs> if this guy is dumb enough to be a pedophile, then he calls him in, hey, guys, something's wrong with my files, could you know? <laughs> He does, does what he gets. And I believe here's where the whole death penalty thing, and this is why I think it's important. If you're into kitty porn, whatever happened, I understand, but I know you missed the loosest interpretation of humanity living together that we possibly could have. So we gotta, you know, just kill you and you re-audition for the human race in a couple of hundred years. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, boy. Does your employer have the right to monitor your computer, Dane? Listen, boss, you can shove a lipstick camera up my ass. You can watch me play Mahjong all day long. But if that vending machine is not stocked, if that dwindles down to a bag of stale peanuts and a Charleston chew, I will kill you. All right. Ellen. Well, I never had a job with a computer unless um, you count the register at that place where they make the two old beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. But if I did and some nosy ass white bitch supervisor, wait a minute, that's uh, uh, redundant. Anyway, if she found, you know, the nappy headed Negro that I have found on psychicfriends.com that's gonna eat my coochie on Friday, well, I guess that'd be all right. All right. Ready? Jay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Nick. No, they don't have the right unless you work for the Department of Child Welfare and your idea of Casual Friday is showing up wearing leather chaps and a ball gag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. What's a ball gag? Shut up. Those little red things. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I'd love to have a nice game of Mahjong with you guys. Yeah. What the hell was that? Mahjong. Everybody Mahjong. That and strong bad. That's like the two things everybody does on the. You know, the I know, but I'm saying you pronounce it wrong. Mahjong. I said it right. Mahjong. Uh, Mahjong. Right, I think we should move on. Mahjong. 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 I'm sorry. I didn't know that I was saying it improperly. <laughs> Mahjong. <laughs> Your tag doesn't stop once you hit the stage, huh? <laughs> you see backstage, it's like hearts of darkness. <laughs> You're on in five. All right, easy. <laughs> Jay, is this an infringement on uh, the rights of this professor? Uh, well, I'd like to know where he got his law degree. DeVry? Jesus, this guy's... <laughs> this guy's a lawyer, and he's, like, calling technicians in, like you said, to pull up, like, his kitty porn, you know. Uh, I, whenever I'm around you, Helen, I start talking like you. I, you know, all of a sudden... <laughs> Next thing you know, you know, I think uh, this guy should... Uh, he's gonna spend the rest of his uh, life in jail because he thinks an 18-year-old is, you know, too masculine. Uh, I don't think that's... I think that's too lenient. I think he should spend 10 years in jail and have to watch Dane Cook's act. Oh. Oh. oh, holy Jesus. It's not no. DeVry, it's DeVry. <laughs> <laughs> Mahjong DeVry. All these are all foreign words. Thank Mahjong DeVry is a French word. <laughs> now, do you guys think privacy matters even when you're going after pedophiles? Does it still matter that these guys, they went into his computer, into his, you know, into his, all his files? They which they probably do to everybody to find porno pictures. You would do the same thing if you were a computer well, tech, Well, now that I'm they sure, have right? software that can track where you've gone on the internet. You yeah. don't need that to catch me. Just, you know, pull my shades down, turn on a black light. <laughs> <laughs> I got, uh, I, I, I got, uh, I got more DNA, you know, on my, uh, <laughs> my mouse pad, you know, than a, than a bedspread at, uh, Red Roof Inn. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's Some a lot of work. Some things you're not supposed to share, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's. But it's a beautiful visual. Okay. I have no problem with people uh, following where I surf on the web. If you know, if it's general knowledge that I'm on Bangbus.com making maps of Hawaii on my own carpet, then God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> Bangbus. No, nice. but I, 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 there? Nice. Yeah. I nice. think that I think that he should have gotten caught because if he's, he's a college professor, you know, at NYU, and if he can't intimidate and get you know laid the old-fashioned way by intimidating co-eds, you know. But, you know <laughs> Then he should get caught, you know. I mean, they're homesick kids, you know. Yeah. And but they, they are grades. too old for him in a way. He likes the little kids. Oh, well, then there's a park across the street. You know, I've been no, there. No, Washington oh. Square Park. <laughs> sure, he, coming up with answers. They're not saying yeah, good ones, saying. Like, you know. He's already reapplied to be a teacher at a kindergarten, I <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Inside Macy's. Guess what, guys? Inside Macy's Manhattan, suspected shoplifters are led to a room every day where their body search and handcuffed by security guards and uh, asked to pay penalties without police involvement. I'm getting hard on for it, but is this fair, <laughs> Ellen? Well, you know what, Colin? I'm really, um, I'm, I'm really upset that you would ask me that question. You know? Really? Yeah. You think I'm, that was profiling that I asked you? Yeah, yeah a little bit. So. And I'm, I'm insulted that you would even think that I would, you know, shop at Macy's, let alone steal from there. I, um, I only steal at Neiman Marcus, and. Um, <laughs> And, and, you know, when I find myself handcuffed, it's not my civil rights that I want violated. Oh. Um, <laughs> nice. I want the Abner Louima suite, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Write that down, Nick. Okay, uh, thank you very much. She's wow. not playing games. She no, I'm not. Like, I'm not she playing. is not playing games. <laughs> <laughs> what about... <laughs> you know Abner, don't you? I, uh, yeah, I'm familiar uh, with his right, uh, work. So they have their own little... <laughs> <laughs> they have their own little court system at Macy's, yeah. right? That, that's the issue. Which is good because our court system's already clogged, right? Right. But do you want to have a trial for, you know, some kid who boosted a George Foreman girl the night before Kwanzaa? Come on. And give me a break. <laughs> he had to go. Wait a minute. Come now, on. Why, why are people assuming that the guy that stole the thing is black in that joke? Yeah. It's a white kid stealing it for a black friend. Does that that's mean, how I wrote it. See that? Does that mean, too, that you need to hire, like, a, a Macy's attorney? I mean, I've <laughs> Like the lady from Ladies Lingerie is now my legal counsel. <laughs> they have a Jacobian the Myers actually. Is from Foot Locker. <laughs> the referee Foot comes in. Foot Locker is not inside of Macy's. <laughs> no, it's the, not. No, but the referee oh, comes in from Foot Locker to deliver. But I'd rather be no. held in. We don't have malls in New York. I'd rather be held in a pen at Macy's. What's that? I'd rather be held in a pen at Macy's than like a New York pen next to some rapist Muslim. I'd rather be next to like a six or eight year old Jewish woman who lifted some Tupperware. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, the point is, should <laughs> she like that one? See, the uh, I'm glad I'm with it. Look, I thought we had something, you people, you and me. Please don't leave me alone with these people here. We'll be right back. Comedy Central took a 20-something comedy writer. His name? Adam. Added a Hollywood icon who's been in over 100 movies, Gary Busey, and gave them their own show. Ah! Catch. No. Whoa! Ah! You shot yourself in the leg? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's ripped now. This is going to be fun. Sweet Christ, I thought you were kidding. Come on, somewhere between reality and insanity. I'm with Busey. New episode Tuesday at 10 here on Comedy Central. In the never-ending uh, problems, you know, the racial tensions in the world, a lawsuit charges that Abercrombie and Fitch discriminates against Hispanics, Asians, and blacks in the hiring of its floor people. Now, let me tell you something. Black kids are smart, funny, deserve to work like anybody else. But can I speak honestly? You're not the most engaging customer service representatives I've ever met. <laughs> I go into Foot Locker. First of all, they never let you know you, that they work there, so it turns into a racial thing right away. You're like, I'm sorry, do you work here? Yo, well, I gotta work here because I'm black. I'm sorry, do you not work? Oh, I can't have a job now. I'm... <laughs> they like to mess with the Blancos unpopular, okay? I'm not lying. This sounds like a joke. I saw a sign in Foot Locker that said the customer is always white. Okay, that was a joke. But let me tell you something else. I knew some of those kids from Macy's Prison, Jesus. and I'm not making that part up. <laughs> Nick, yes. should a company be able to brand a product as they see fit? Brand a product? What do you do? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Do you really listen to me? The first time you ever listen to one of my questions. <laughs> Should a company be it's, able to, uh... It's like I studied for math tests. Now you're asking me an English question. <laughs> I, I, uh... 
Paul. Well, Abercrombie and Fitch was, was the big article because they in Boston they have 106 whites, three blacks, and a Hispanic, which sounds about right to me. <laughs> but I don't have a problem with the Boston. racial makeup. It's the you know coloreds only fitting rooms. I thought was way out of line. <laughs> He's got an important point, but what do you guys think? Should businesses be representational ethnically of all ethnic groups? Should they all have to yeah. Absolutely not. Oh, I, I, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And uh, you know what? We marched. You know, we marched. And we oh, sang we the songs. Enough? We marched and we sang the songs and we had the railroad with the woman that got hit in the head. All right? right? <laughs> and it was not so that we could work at Abercrombie and Fitch folding socks, okay? <laughs> so that's not like a big thing for us, okay? You know what I'm saying? And Abercrombie and Fitch is Latin for flat ass. Have you ever tried to put on those jeans? They don't fit us, okay? <laughs> For us, and we want I, you to have a space that's yours. I think you know what I'm thank you. We want you well, to have a space that's I'm, yours. I'm just looking at the photo. I want to know what Woody Allen's wife is doing boycotting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they can't pronounce it. That's why they boycott. I'm a comic bitch. I love a comic bitch. Look, if I they went need in a bigger in a, piece of cardboard. Yeah, they do. If, yeah, they, <laughs> they ran out of cardboard. <laughs> oh, sorry. Look, if I, I, what, what would happen right now if I walked down to the village and applied for a job to be a floor manager at Fat Farm? They'd freestyle me out onto the sidewalk. <laughs> it's true, everything man. Everything is it's not true. for you. You know what I'm saying? Why is everything for you? Let have a crowd We don't want to work there. I don't know Apparently, who wrote this article. I think it was a, a, small, a slow news day. We don't want to I cannot to work figure it. you well, out. You Pick your side of the fence and stay there. on it. <laughs> We're so obsessed with diversity. Every commercial, you know, you know, when guys get together to watch football on Sunday, it's not an Eskimo on a sled and Indian in a headdress. Uh, you know what I mean? A Chinese guy with a walk. I mean, geez, it might be four white guys watching the game. Can we have that commercial? Or right. four black guys or four, you know, Down syndrome kids? Come on. <laughs> Portland pizza chain has hired homeless people to wear signs. They're paid in pizza, soda, and a few dollars. <laughs> they claim they're just trying to help the homeless. Dane, are they exploiting homeless people and robbing them of their dignity? Uh, I think that this could uh, this could get a lot worse. I think what's eventually going <laughs> to nothing. What's eventually going to happen is big uh, corporations will start uh, you know using these homeless guy like you know or uh, like race cars or uh, billboards. You know they'll <laughs> have like a big Pennzoil patch on their chest. And, this guy, crazy Dougie over here, he's gonna be wearing a zestfully clean hat. He hasn't showered in four weeks. But even this homeless guy looks like, you know, he's in the damn uh, spin doctors or something, you know? <laughs> okay, he was in the spin doctors, but look. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Can't they get a real homeless I, I love that you said Portland. That, I mean, let's sum yeah. it up. The Pacific right. Northwest, the place you. that, you know, they hug trees and give needles out to heroin addicts are the same people that are going to cure the homeless problem with a pazone. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's wearing a weed hat. Like, we don't know where the money's going. Yeah, you're right. Of course he's hungry for pizza schnitzel. Right. So he's wearing a weed hat. <laughs> Good call. Good catch. <laughs> I guarantee you, after they gave him the pizza, he did ask for money anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, this is a subject that I've been wanting to get to for a long time. Six Flags is hosting OzFest this summer. <laughs> In upstate New York, yet they're banning Marilyn Manson from performing, okay? Now, my personal opinion is Ozzy got him booted off the tour because his kids were probably like, yeah, Marilyn Manson stinks, you know, Dad, you're corny. You know, so he got rid of him. But they're saying it's because of his music as opposed to Ozzy. So this is causing some controversy. Anybody have an opinion on Six Flags? They don't, want, they don't want Marilyn Manson at Six Flags. They don't want the kids throwing up before they go on the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that at all. I don't either, but they laugh. So. <laughs> Look, the bottom line is this. <laughs> is, is, uh, Mar isn't it all over when these guys are playing at Six Flags anyway? Isn't yeah. that the danger is gone? That's the big point, hey, right? Said, Look, Marilyn Manson should headline the tour because he was inside Rose McGowan. Yeah, well, that's not, I agree with that. They yeah, said they don't want, how did he pull that one? Oh. They, they don't want him there because he has plastic breasts and eye contacts. I guess I'm not bringing my wife to Six Flags. <laughs> <laughs> As the wives of Henry VIII tried to say, we'll be right back. I don't get that one either. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, with the new round of Bush tax cuts, one phrase that keeps getting thrown around is class warfare. Sure, America has different classes, but the way people are today, it's tough to tell where you fit in. One of the great things about living in India, which I've never done, is uh, it has a caste system. Over there, you're put in a class from birth. Some of you are Brahmins, some of you are Sundras. It's easy to know where you stand. 
That's why tonight I present the American caste system. All right, finally, we're gonna sort this thing out. I've narrowed it down to five castes that cover everyone in this country based on the value assigned to them by society. We're gonna go from the highest to the lowest. Now, the very top <laughs> caste are the Compt. They're called the Compt, all right? Not only are these people rich and famous, they're so high up, they never have to pay for anything. <laughs> they're always comped. All the details of their lives are taken care of by the people who constantly fawn over them. The personal assistants, the publicists, the nannies, the weird group of friends from high school that never left. People in this cast include J-Lo, Ashton Kutcher, and Donald Trump. These people are so high up, they actually wouldn't come on my show. <laughs> it's hard to believe. That's the big time. The next cast are the Tuesday Nighters, okay? They can get into the same hot clubs and restaurants as the cast above them but they have to go on Tuesday night instead of Saturday or Friday night. <laughs> now, in between art openings and weekend retreats, these people live in constant fear that someone will mistake them for being in a lower caste. It's this fear that keeps BMW dealerships and stores like the Sharper Image in business. <laughs> Other people in this caste are like most lawyers and the vast majority of hot girls under 30. <laughs> uh, two thirds of the country is in this next caste, the Wall Martians. <laughs> These are uh, the majority. These are people who have spent some part of their week in a Walmart. Loud families, blue collar single guys, and people who work in office parks are all in this cast. If you've celebrated at least one birthday along with the wait staff at Applebee's, you probably belong here. All right. Under these people are the ghosts. These seem like regular people until you realize that society puts no importance on them at all. They could just disappear and no one would know. And here you got old people in nursing homes, small time farmers, the weird uncle who lives in the spare room in your parents' house, and overweight single women who find inspiration in books like Chicken Soup for the Soul. <laughs> All right. <laughs> finally, well, finally we got the repellents. Unlike the ghosts, these people are seen but actively avoided because most of us don't want to remind ourselves that life is awful and depressing and these people have a Tough life. Here you got the homeless, <laughs> illegal Mexican slaughterhouse workers, telemarketers, and my boy Corey Feldman. Now, <laughs> so there's the American caste system, right? Now, what's different about our system from India's is you're never stuck in your caste. In 10 years, JLo could make a few more of those awful movies. She could end up here with the War Martians. <laughs> Whew. Meanwhile, this guy could develop a heroin uh, problem, end up over here with the repellents. And uh, this guy could win the lottery, you know, and end up on top. You know, him and like, you know, 40 guys. In, you know, the, but, uh, <laughs> you know, hold up the thing in the paper. But, uh, you know, let's hope uh, this is what it's all about, folks. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know what I mean, baby. Come on. Spring break 89, me, him, <laughs> any uh, No, I didn't mean like that, folks. Jesus. <laughs> I was saying I knew him. Is, uh, you know, I'm sick and tired of my rep. God bless America. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, want to know my recipe for fun? Yeah, two parts drunken mayhem. A splash of graphic nudity. Oh, yes, love. Oh, throw in a thong for flavor. Hit Thursdays at 10, and what do you get? A new season of Insomniac. Mmm, delicious. We're mixing up a new batch of Insomniac with Dave Attell. Tomorrow at 10, only on Comedy Central. Mm, that's a good season. You know what? In today's hard-hit economy, many businesses are starting to employ the homeless, despite the risk that the homeless might take away jobs that rightly belong to the crazy. What program <laughs> or initiative would you suggest to help ease the homeless problem? Jay Moore. Look, I, first of all, the worst thing to happen to homeless people is you can, like, make a living at it. You know, you can just maintain. I see the same homeless people today I saw when I was 16. I used to visit Manhattan. It's the same people. They're out there. From now on, if you're homeless, there's only be two options. You either get your life together or you die. Okay? <laughs> but I have a great idea for the homeless. Homeless Olympics. And if we had... <laughs> hold, hold, release. If we had a homeless Olympics, the U.S. would send over the freaking dream team, okay? You could have... We could have a whole decathlon. We could have events like, you know, the shopping cart push, the take a dump in your pants. 
You could have the nap and my personal favorite, how many winter coats can you fit on your back in the summertime? All right. All right. DaneCook.com. Yes. DaneCook.com. Ellen! Hey, Colin, you know, funny you should ask. You know, Jay and I, we've put together aside our differences, and we've come up with a new reality show featuring the homeless. No sign selling pizza. They're just going to be wearing targets. Charlton Heston is hosting, and we're using them to train the military, and they're, go they're all gonna get flown to White Sands Missile Target Range outside of sunny Las Cruces, New Mexico, and we're gonna call it Last Homeless Person Standing. <laughs> and the winner gets an exclusive talent contract with the Home Shopping Network and a feature role on Yo! MTV Cribs. It's a damn good idea, all right. That, that's right. Number one. Last comic standing. Hate if you want. A lot of people mm. love me too. Number one. Yeah, what do you know? <laughs> Dane Cook. Yeah, love. Love makes a person feel like they can rise above any situation. Um, and that is why we should start a homeless dating service called Spare Changes. <laughs> That's a laugh. See, once Crazy Dougie lays his murky eyes on the lady with 14 bags of empty soda cans, he will think he's homeless in heaven. In fact, when I see those two love pigeons embrace and start making out all hot and hungry, I'll be the first person to shout out, hey, you two, get a box. <laughs> all right. All right. Nikki D. My program is called Homeless Shlomless. First of all, they should be called bums, not homeless. To be truly homeless, you have to have a hat home and have lost it. A refrigerator box blown in the wind doesn't count. <laughs> I'd have the NYPD staple fast food applications to their foreheads while they're passed out. That way, when they wake up, they will literally have a job opportunity staring them in the face. <laughs> If they're still not working in a week, we force them to go on Fear Factor and do really gross stuff like eating breath mints and touching soap. <laughs> All right, folks. That's the end of our show. Thank you very much for coming. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.